look at how the markets fared last year, of course, uh, up 32.1%, so quite a good gain there. But over the last mm. two years, we've only gained 0.7%. So really, yeah. it's all about playing the markets correctly. Do you think 2010 is going to offer great returns, or do you think we've run too hard? You know, you make a you make a comment there on playing playing the markets, and I mean that's what that's unfortunately what most people do. They try and they try and buy and sell and buy and sell, and they try and predict where things are potentially going to be going, rather than saying what am I paying today for the earnings that I'm getting, and what is the price that I'm paying for the earnings that I'm getting, and when you make uh, when you when you start thinking about it like from the, from you know from that perspective, and you just think about it just from a from a from a logical perspective, you're no longer worried where the market is going to be going because you know that long-term earnings should really be going up and that's why we like to look at stats and we look like to look at the markets you know in the past because markets in the past usually will tell you a lot about how it could potentially behave into the future and there's obviously you have a whole bunch of factors that change as political factors and so forth now I mean just to put 2009 into consider you know into context um, if you look at these stats uh, the market was up 32.1 percent now the last time around the market was up by that amount was in 2006 where it actually did better than 32.1 it was up over 40 percent but if you take these massive returns in the market into consideration over calendar years, it only happens about 18% of the time. And I'm taking data from 1925 into consideration. So it's an anomaly. You know, to get a 32.1% return in the market is not something which happens that often. And that's why, and that's often what happens when markets are exceptionally cheap and then they start buying up again because people realize that this thing is actually too cheap. And we saw that during the course of 2009. Well, things obviously too cheap, but looking very cheap last year. Now things are looking relatively expensive. And the big question is, are earnings going to catch up to what we've been seeing happening on uh, the share price front? Of course, over the last few years, as, as I said, 0.7% up for the stock market, but uh, earnings contracting by 10%. So the question is, are earnings going to catch up this year? Look at this. Look at the look at March 2009. The market starts off at an 8 PE, and if you look at that same price to earnings today, the price to earnings is t today is about 18 for the market. But at the same time, even though you've had price that has increased tremendously, your earnings com your earnings component has actually dropped significantly. Just in the year, earnings are down about 30 percent. This is 2009. 2008 earnings was up, and on, on on you know per annum, if you take the two years into consideration, earnings have dropped by about 10 percent per annum. Now the question is. Is earnings going to be turning around from this point forward? Now, if you look at the long-term trend for earnings, earnings have to turn around at some point. If it's not going to be 2010, it's going to be through 2011. But we have to have a conducive economic environment for earnings to turn around. And do you think that it's it's going to happen this year for South Africa? I mean, unemployment is on the rise. We've got a stronger rand, which is hurting quite a lot of industries out there. I mean, your forecast for that. And I know you don't like forecasting. <laughs> well, mostly predominantly because forecasting, most forecasters get it get it tremendously wrong. If you look at the data set that's coming in today you'll see there's a bottoming out effect. So numbers aren't getting worse. Could they get slightly worse? Yes, they could get slightly worse. But there's no catalyst to make them tremendously worse. So you know, so you can see everything is bottoming out. If you look at most of the graphs, you look at most of the economic f fundamentals that I play, you see a bottoming out effect, and you start seeing them rising again. And that will drive earnings. Now, remember that earnings this year is not going to be up again by 30%. You know, you're not, you don't just make up the lost ground in a, in, a, in, a, in a very short period of time. But you know, if earnings just stay ahead of inflation this year, then it makes today's prices that you're paying for the market fairly reasonable. And the market will take off from these points again and give you an average return beyond these points. Mm -hmm. Certainly, the, 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 you know, the research that I've done and the work that I've looked at shows that markets generally on the back end of a, of a crisis, you know, start buying up quite quite significantly, leave earnings behind because the earnings haven't turned around because mark, remember markets are really forward looking at the end of the day. And then at some point earnings start, you know, catching up with the price again. But surely Kirby, if you see that markets have run up quite significantly and you are uh, a little bit cautious about uh, there being quite a big pullback, shouldn't you be taking money off the table like we've seen now? Markets relatively high. Some investors out there asking that question, should I be locking in profits and perhaps uh, wait to see what is going to happen and maybe go in when markets fall another 10 percent if they do if you if you followed a good philosophical you know kind of process you know you, you had a process in place before you started investing uh, you would have bought through the lows in March and April and through 2009 and your portfolio should be up you know tremendously on the back end of that we've had some really really good stocks you know in up in the excess of 50 and 60 percent now the question is if you're up 50 and 60 percent um, and you have built in that amount of fat into your portfolio do you today sell in the hope for a better price in the future and pay your capital gains tax on that 
or do you continue to stay invested and even if the market drops 10 percent um, you know you're still up a good 40 percent on some of your stocks and then just buy into the weakness I would say the latter is probably a better thing to do. I'd like to touch on China because now we're hearing that the country is uh, perhaps tightening monetary policy, increasing uh, the reserves that banks are uh, should actually hold. Uh, so quite a lot of caution coming through from there. Of course, we saw Asia under significant pressure this morning. Uh, do you think that it's going to impact the global economic recovery or do you think that it's actually a good thing that China is doing this to prevent a bubble? No, I think China is just showing good monetary systems and they're just showing that there's, 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 there's monetary discipline behind what they're trying to achieve and I don't think that's a I don't think that's a bad thing yes it's it's normal for markets to react in the way in which they're reacting this morning you know on the back end of that kind of news um, it's just normal course you know of business you know you look at that economy the economy has been growing at tremendous rates you know um, really speaking 2009 and in the, in the subprime crisis was really at the end of the day was a blip for them you know yeah growth slowed down a little bit but you're still seeing these heady numbers coming out as far as you know double digit growth as far as GDP is concerned so it, it makes sense for them to do this kind of thing. And so they're not raising, they're not hiking rates by a tremendous mm -hmm. amount. You know. Okay, so the U.S. is still under pressure. We've got uh, the European Union unemployment hitting 10%. A lot of problems in a lot of the countries yeah. there. Uh, of course, Asia doing quite well. Yeah. Africa still sort of uh, seeing where it's going and, of course, really being boosted by the likes of imports and exports uh, into China. Momentum for the markets this year could be, are we going to be seeing gains this year? You probably could be seeing gains, yes. Um, you're not going to see tremendous gains. You're not going to see the gains that you saw last year. And this is such a surprise on the earnings front that earnings just, you know, take off, you know, which is not on the cards, you know. The earnings will will slowly start increasing and for that the price will in a commensurable way you know move up again you know the long-term return on the JSE all share is about 15 percent per annum um, and in the, certain years the market could be really lackluster and only give you about a five or a six percent return for a complete year and in certain instances and give you a fantastic return like we had last year 32 percent return um, and that is as the market continues to gauge earnings and where earnings go. If we just have a situation like we've had, uh, you know, through, you know, we, we, there's a bottoming out of data and we continue to see a slight rise in data, then there's no reason for the market to, to significantly sell down. You know, we're not going to see markets selling down again by 30% unless there's a catalyst for it. And what is that catalyst? If there's no, if there's no leverage in the system, what is the catalyst for that?